Jeremy here in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool typographic futuristic poster design in Illustrator. So I got inspired by seeing this inspirational post I saw on Instagram and decided to sort of create a similar effect using typography and using this cool gradient effect all within Illustrator, not even in Photoshop. So you can see this is what I created, Go Design, just a hypothetical like conference type of design or something interesting. First up, what you want to do, I'm just going to bring my menu toolbars up. I'm just going to have a basic A4 size. You could make it A3 if you want or A5, doesn't matter, but A4 is a good size for a poster. I'm going to press M for the rectangle tool, drag a box, and I'm using my own brand palette today. And I'm using just this dark charcoal color for the background. And what I'd like to do is put that on the background layer, and I'm going to close that layer there, as you can see on the right side. Then what I'm going to do is going to start to type out the typography. So I'm going to press T for the type tool, just jump back up to the design layer, and I'm going to left click once. And the font I'm using today is called The National. So I'm just going to type out Grow Design. The National has a lot of interesting weights. It's got like aged and bold, oblique light, which is really cool. So I really like this font. Um, I bought it from Design Cuts, I believe so, ages ago. And yeah, it's really cool. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is select this bottom text, hold Alt, and then tap the left key once just to kern it. So I'm making it really tight, as you can see. Then what I'm going to do is go to the G and left click in between the G and the R. And I'm just going to kern that by tapping Alt and the left key once. So you can see if I control Z, the effect there. So tighten up that. And the O is pretty tight already, so I'm going to leave it at that. So cool, once I'm happy with this, what I want to do is go to Type and click Create Outlines. You can shoot the, the shortcut key there to create outlines is Shift Control Zero. So I'm going to click that and now you can see it's all shapes. I'm then going to press Control Shift G to ungroup everything. You can also click ungroup by going to Object and clicking ungroup there. So now we've got all these individual shapes as you can see, which is super, super cool. For the other text, I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to add some text. You can add whatever you like. You can do, um, you know, location. I can type like Sydney, Australia. I'm going to kern this section here just to tighten it up a bit. Oh, I don't know what happened there. And I'm just going to make it smaller. I could also go with the regular font if I want to make it like a thin version, which is cool. Or just keep it bold, which is fine. Scale that down. And I can call it conference. Yeah, whatever I want to type here, make it small. And I'm just going to turn off uh, auto spell check for now. So I'm creating, using the space at the bottom to fill some information and put some nice hierarchy there. Just putting the date, um, so for example, 25 uh, to 21 for designers. So I'm just typing out that text. And you can see to duplicate, what I like to do is like hold Alt and Shift, and that's how I to duplicate so I can select hold alt and shift duplicate and I, as I'm dragging across and that's a fast way to like quickly duplicate text so for now I think that is fine I'm gonna leave the poster just like that which is awesome cool now to create this sort of gradient um, floating shape effect we need to create a shape so what you can actually do is I have this cool tool called dynamic shapes from astute graphics so I can literally just create a circle already made like this um, right or you you can just create a circle duplicate it by pressing ctrl c ctrl f and then scaling it down so i'm holding alt and shift to scale that and then what i'm doing is i'm going to select them both press shift m and then just hold alt to minus that out and that's the shape builder tool it allows you to like minus and plus shapes together which is really really handy so now I've got my shape, what I'm going to do is make a gradient. So I'm going to click on my gradient tool here. I'm going to make it just linear for now. And I'm going to use this nice purpley blue color that I, I like to play around with. Just very vibrant, futuristic type of style. So beautiful. I think I like that. Then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this to put a backup there. 
and then I'm going to drag and find a nice position. So I want this shape to come through the O here, as you can see, and make it like fly through to just add a bit of 3D and dimensionality to the actual design. So I'm just going to line it up and I'll scale it as much as I need to like that. And you can see on here, I wanna make sure that this is lining up as much as possible. So you can see, I'm gonna sort of line it up there with the O, which is really, really cool. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make a box by pressing M and I'm gonna make it the same size as this O. To make sure that it snaps, make sure that you got snap to point and also smart guides on, that should help you out. I'm just gonna make it yellow so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's the same size so you can see it needs to line up with the actual O. Need this. I think that is snapping now. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, awesome. So it's snapped. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drag this down all the way like that. And I'm gonna press Shift M again. I'm going to make sure you select both shapes. Press Shift M, hold minus to minus that off. And then what I'm gonna do is I can actually minus uh, this section off over here. So I need to just cut this as well. So I'm using this other shape as well, this yellow shape to cut the pieces. So I'm gonna select them all, Shift M, and I'm gonna click plus on this shape here, which is great. And these other shapes, I can just leave that for now. I'll probably just plus this bottom shape as well, just in case. Actually, I'll leave that. And now I've got this shape, which is really cool. I'm gonna just press the eyedropper to select the gradient once again on that shape. And now what I can do is I'm gonna select this shape that I just cut out and I'm gonna bring it to the back. So you click object arrange and what you wanna do is you wanna send to the back. Beautiful. So now we're getting this effect of the illusion of this shape going all the way through to that back part there, which I think is really, really cool. Amazing. Oops, what did I do? All right. Now what we wanna do, we wanna start to play around with this, the typography to make sure that they overlap like this. So I'm going to get the S. I'm gonna go object, arrange, bring to the front. The shortcut keys are shift control and the square brackets, right? So I can use my my shortcuts if I want. Control shift, uh, right square bracket or left square bracket. And if you're on a Mac, then whenever I say control, it's gonna be a command and alt is basically option. So just keep that in mind, guys. Hopefully it's not too confusing. So we've got this effect. Then what I'm gonna do is bring the G up. What I need to do though, is I need to plus this G and bring it forward. So I'm just going to make a, a duplicate of, of the G and I'm gonna bring it up like this. And then I'm gonna hold shift, select the this shape and this, this G shape. And I'm just gonna minus off this other shapes like that. And just make sure that you don't cut off this section. So you need to duplicate this shape as well. So duplicate the gradient. So I've got a duplicate here. And once again, I'm just gonna minus all that off. So now I've got this shape. So all I want is basically this shape here. Um, which is really amazing. And I think that's looking good so far. I also want to cut off these end bits. So I'm gonna hold shift, select the, the shapes, hold shift M and then select minus. I'll make sure we select this and then hold alt to minus and then just left click, cut that out. So basically we're, we're like a butcher chopping up some meat or something, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start to create the 3D effect for the actual tube that we've got here. So the best way to do that is open your properties panel. You can also open your appearance panel. It basically does the same thing. I'm gonna click the little FX button. If you don't have the property panel, you can go to window and then select properties. Once you're done with that, click the FX button, go to stylize and then Click Inner Glow. So for this Inner Glow, you can see what we have. I'm gonna click the swatch, click color swatches and find like a nice darker color
color, like a darker blue from your main color, whatever color you're picking. But I picked like this navy blue. And it's currently at multiply 30% with a 10 blur on the edge. If we put it to the center, you can see it makes the middle dark. But I don't want the middle to be dark. I want the edges to be dark. So I want to press OK there. Then what I want to do is click FX, stylize, add another inner glow. But this time we're going to flip it. This time we're going to just go to soft light. Change the swatch to a lighter color. So for this, I'll just click the blue for now. And then I'm going to click it center. So right now we, we're going to need to pick a bit of a lighter blue. So I'm just going to see that. And I'm going to play around with some of these options. So typically color dodge works nice. You've also got screen and also overlay. What I need to do though, I need to bump up the blur so it brings in the glow away from the edges. And then I'm going to bump this up like that. Add a bit of more blur. So it's moving away from the edges there. Uh, I think that color's fine. I want to play around with some of these other effects. Hard light. Let's see what that does. We've got color dodge. And I think those are probably the best options. So I'm just going to go back to screen. And then I'm going to press OK once you're happy with that. And now you can see that it starts to look a bit more 3D like a 3D tube instead of just a flat sort of design, which is amazing. Beautiful. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to start to add a bit of the fades. So I'm going to go to my gradient tool over here. And what I want to do now is I'm going to click the purple section and click 0% on the opacity. This will make it fade out so it looks like it's coming out of the cosmos or coming out of the empty space, which is cool. Then what I'm going to do is press L for the ellipse tool, as you can see located on the left as well. I'm going to just hold shift and... Draw a nice ellipse there. Go back to my gradient and click the radial, wait, uh, radial gradient. I'm going to drag a purple swatch like this. I'm going to drag this slider up just so it's more potent. And I'm just going to drag that and I'm going to bring it to the back here. And this will help us create our nice like fade out effect. Um, and hopefully it works well. I need to make sure that the N is above, so I'm going to bring the N above that. And also bring this gradient just below the N there. And I can also probably bring this in just a little bit. Just like that. I could probably leave it like that if I wanted. Or I can have this nice gradient. And you can also play around. If you move it, you can see you can change the angle there. And another cool thing as well is I can go back to my property panel and go to stylus and click feather. And this sort of adds like a blur to the edge, blurs it in, which I like doing to get this nice fade effect. As you can see, if the gradient tool is not your forte. So that's another cool way. And then I'm just going to scale this up like it's fading into some portal or something interesting. Beautiful. All right, awesome. So now we need, all we need to do is add some uh, shadows. As you can see here, I've got these shadows. And this is going to make it pop a lot more. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this shape. Press Control c Control f And it should make a duplication, as you can see. I'm going to go to my Appearance panel and just delete these uh, effects that I have. So I just have the flat shape. I'm going to make it a black color like this. Then what I can do is I can go to my appearance panel or the property panel and go to stylize, click the FX button, stylize, and we want to do a feather, basically round two. And I'm going to do like 30 points. And then what I'm going to do is object arrange and I'm going to bring backward. And so now all you have to do is just tap it to the left a bit, as you can see. Now we've got this cool shadow coming out from the edges there beautiful and because the background's black it's a, it has a nice fade effect I don't have to do too much editing and I think that is really really amazing and we don't want a shadow here because we want to make sure that this is overflowing so what I can do is just bump move this up a little bit just to get rid of that shadow there so just move the this path up a little bit you won't really notice much of the difference 
and the N is above the shape. So we don't want a shadow on the N anyway, so that's fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, uh, a duplicate of this, or I can make a custom shape. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool. I'm going to locate this corner object here. And I'm just going to go along this shape like this. And this is a cool trick I usually do. I'm going to make it black and the same, I'm going to use the same effect. FX, star, lies, and just go feather. And I'm just going to make it a little bit light, press OK, and then just bring it to the back. I'm just going to move that a little bit. So if it's too harsh, you can always add more of a feather as well if you feel like it's a bit too harsh like that. And you can see it starts to reduce that amount of multiply uh, effect of the drop shadow basically. And you can see there now it adds another layer, but if we didn't have it, you can see it looks like it's floating, but now it feels like that's above that shape there. You could also do it to the S as well if you wanted to. So you could do a shape there. Um, so I can just like copy it quickly and do it. And just like, just change the color so you can see. So you just want to do it just on the edges like this. Make sure it's got some width. And once again, black and then I can just go effect, stylize, drop shadow. Oh, sorry, not drop shadow. Effect star lies feather. And then press OK. It should automatically save your previous settings, which is a nice little trick. Thanks, Illustrator. And there we have some shadows on the S there, which I think is great. And if it's too much, you just move the shape, which is amazing. And basically, there we have it. That's how we create sort of this 3D nice effect and an amazing poster design. And then you can save it as a PDF or a JPEG or whatever you want to do. But that's the final design. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to create more designs or posters or creative stuff like this. And let me know if you like this type of stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Smash the like button and remember to subscribe for more design content every week. I'll see you in the next video.